Uh, I'm going to do a quick review. Um, most of you already know this, but uh, it kind of help, helps up the foundation uh, for what we're doing in Cub Scouting, which is to streamline and simplify. Uh, over the years, what has happened is we have just layered a program item onto a program item onto a program item without really fairly evaluating um, if those things that we thought was working were actually working. Uh, and so we are uh, very data driven now in looking at um, and, and asking for feedback nationally from volunteers, parents, uh, about what's working, what's not working. So uh, this is not streamlined and simplified. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't already seen, this is what we call rolling changes. Uh, and so this was a barrier in the past to making changes in our program because we have inventory and we have things that we're uh, working with national supply. So a rolling change simply just means that we're no longer going to order these things. Once they sell out, they're out. So you're going to hear that a lot when we talk about changes to Cub Scouting. We use the term rolling change, which means that you can continue to use the pro that program or that item, uh, but just be wary that it's going. we're not going to reorder any new ones. Uh, so really, you know, for example, do we really need three different den leader patches? Uh, the, the reality is, is that um, we don't have a wolf or bear den leader patch, right? Uh, and so we don't, the question of having a lion den leader patch came up and we're like, let's make this easier and not harder. So we, we, are, we are going to just having a single den leader patch and that way you don't have to sew on another badge uh, from year to year. Uh, the other items were the confusion around fourth grade and fifth grade weed loads. Uh, and we have things that we're going to be rolling out in the near future. When I say near future, we, we were planning on the next year, but that may not happen. Uh, but let me just um, give you kind of a preview of knowing that uh, it's going to be very clear uh, that if you're in fourth grade, you're a Weeblos, and we're going to completely separate the Arrow of Light unto its uh, a, a standalone program for fifth graders uh, that is specifically designed to get them into Scouts PSA. Um, and then we don't need two different types of socks. We don't need Tiger socks and we don't need Cub Scout socks. So that's another thing that's rolling change. And then we don't need three types of belt. Honestly. So uh, just going to a Cub Scout belt. So this is much more streamlined and simplified of a program, especially when we're welcoming new parents and people who, what I call, are non-legacy families. These are families that, that don't know the scouting jargon, that don't have any folks that were in scouts for a long time. Uh, so this makes it a lot easier to be able to explain to them and to understand. Uh, I do want to promote the scouting.org website and the Cub Scout page. If you haven't been there lately, um, make sure that you, vi you visit this frequently because we do keep this updated. We keep resources for leaders within about two clicks uh, away of things that you really need to know and, and, and have access to. And in a way that we know that most leaders are looking for information, which is by position. Uh, so we have a whole den leader resource page and then broken out by rank. We have support videos for each rank uh, that walks you through how to do a meeting, what the Bobcat badge is, all that good stuff. We've added so many more new quick, simple videos, not 20 minute videos, but like two minute videos. Also, we've improved the uh, online training resources for uh, Cub Scouting. The position specific training has been greatly reduced. So. Every, any position can be trained within two hours now online. Uh, and the PAC committee, PAC committee, not PAC committee chair, PAC committee is a separate track now. And that only takes 45 minutes. So if you get a parent who agrees to be on the committee and help run Pinewood Derby or sell popcorn or wherever it might be, you're not going to ask them to take a three hour training, which is what was done in the past. Now it's just 45 minutes. And here's the cool thing is that all the training modules that you take they're about six minutes each. Um, they carry over. So once you take one about uniforms and Cub Scouting, that doesn't change for each position. So once you've completed that module, if you were a trained den leader and then you were asked to serve as the Cub Master, well, to become a fully trained Cub Master, if you were already a fully trained den leader, you only have to take one module. It's only 12 minutes long and essentially just how to run a pack meeting. And so that, that makes it so much easier to be able to get people to be fully trained and get the content we need them to have. Now, we also know that what we've done is given them the basic information what they need to know because we know that programs like this, university scoutings, all those great things that happen in local councils are where they will get 
other you know in-depth kind of stuff that works on a local level. Uh, we also have a welcoming series that we do, email series that goes out to people who want to get registered into scouting. So really simple, welcome to Cub Scouts. Uh, here's your uniform and your handbook. This is where you get it, driving, driving them to the local scout shop. And then the last piece is just a really quick way for us to get parents to understand this is a volunteer-led organization. Uh, and how can, where do they fit in that puzzle as far as being an active parent, maybe they want to register, or maybe they want to be a leader. And then if you haven't known already about our preview adventure, so this is our, our dipping our toes into a digital delivery system. Uh, so we do have uh, the Yo-Yo Adventure, which is sponsored by Duncan. Uh, and then we have the Protect Yourself Rules Adventure. And the Protect Yourself Rules Adventure is replacing CyberChip. Uh, so for this program year, you can choose to either do CyberChip or you can do the Protect Yourself Rules. All the information that you need to complete the adventure is online. Uh, we've done a survey of parents who've already completed this with Den Leaders. Uh, and uh, with a very, very strong response rate, uh, about a 95% satisfaction <laughs> rate with this program. People like it. Uh, kids have a very positive reaction to it. Uh, and one of the unique things that we are studying, which is the first in the country to do, which is the impact of a child watching a preventative video and then disclosing if they've ever been abused. Uh, and so we are studying that uh, in partnership with the Barbara Sinatra Children's Foundation. All right, so we're gonna talk mostly, those are just kind of quick little catch you up. Uh, the, the bulk of what I wanna talk to you about is um, getting your unit to meet in person. Now, I, I'm just up the road, so I know some of the rules in, in Texas allow for that and that there are opportunities that you can have in-person meetings. Uh, we want to introduce to you the SAFE, all right? So if you are used to the uh, BSA Suite 16, that's being retired, and you're gonna start seeing this. Uh, and S means uh, supervision, A, assessment, F, fitness, and E, equipment and environment. Uh, that acronym, because it's not scouting without an acronym, right? We, we can't, there's, there's some habits that are really hard to break, and apparently this is one of them. Uh, taking the SAFE acronym, you can then put that into any scenario and then kind of build that case. So, for example, under supervision, the, the, the first checkpoint when you're looking at restarting your, your unit is to understand your local and state guidance on preventing COVID-19 exposure. So, what that means is you need to make sure that it is what you want to do is legal and within the parameters and guidelines of not only the state of Texas, but we also know uh, that Governor Abbott has identified certain counties that may be more exposed than others and that there might be some more restrictive um, activities in one county to the next. Uh, so you not only do you have to check your state, but you also have to check your local municipality and in Texas that means pick your local county, uh, and your local city may also have some uh, additional restrictions that they have. Uh, this, this is a, work, uh, a worksheet. You can scan this as a resource. So uh, I'm leaving this up there for, for a while. So if you have your smartphone, you wanna scan the QR code. Uh, this can also be found on the health and safety page of scouting.org. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through the complete checklist uh, day because we're gonna kind of cover on a high level uh, some of the things uh, that we want you to walk through when you're talking about starting uh, back up. So the first question is, can my unit start meeting? That's the number one question we're getting right now. Uh, and the answer is, it depends. And this is why, again, uh, we, you haven't seen a big push on the national level from us saying, go out there and scout, you know, go outside, be, be scouts, because we really can't. Um, if, if you're not aware, there are states uh, such as uh, New York that are just on complete lockdown. There's, there are no, there's no room for uh, small gatherings at all. Uh, and then we even have some states like New Mexico, that, which is also completely shut down. They, they're, um, they're, they're not allowing Philmont to open. Uh, and there's a fine if you're caught in public without a mask. Uh, so we've got, we've got a gamut of 50 different states and how many know, you know, we don't know how many different counties and uh, municipalities that have restrictions. So we can't go out there just yet and say, everyone, it's time to get started. We can't have this big green flag nationally and start waving it and have people start hitting um, the speedway. So uh, 
knowing your local state and uh, county regulations is the first step. Um, for This doesn't really apply to anyone here uh, with other than that you may be in a county in Texas that, that has uh, stricter guidelines than some other counties. And so uh, if you can't meet in person, uh, this is the time to start planning for when that opportunity does present itself. Uh, and you also may find that your parents aren't quite ready to meet in person yet either, but we've got some data to show you that chances are they are. So how do I find out if my unit uh, can meet and any ideas where we can meet? So that's, that's the number two, actually the number one hurdle that we've heard, uh, which is why aren't you meeting? And uh, the traditional meeting locations for most of our PACs have been uh, cut off, uh, whether you're meeting at a school or your church or religious um, affiliation or your charter partner uh, haven't reopened yet, or they have strict guidelines to opening that prevents the whole pack from meeting. Maybe they are in a small group mode and only 10 people can meet, uh, but you have 80 families in your pack. So what do you do? So we've got some creative solutions that we've uh, gotten from across the country that we'll share with you. Then hopefully that will spark some imagination and some ideas with you. But more importantly, we're going to walk you through the steps that these packs that we've seen that have been really successful in doing in-person meetings and events uh, go through. So I'm going to lay the foundation on the research. This is, a, this is hot off the press. So you are the first volunteer group to see this data. Uh, this literally is hot off the press off of, uh, off of last week. Um, so our parent insight is asking the question, what are you looking for a youth program this fall given the impact of COVID. And you look at, now you can choose multiple answers. So that's why this doesn't add up to 100%. So click all that apply. 48%, they are looking for something that brings some normality to their lives, right? So certainly that's in our wheelhouse. Uh, to do something as a group, even if it's socially distanced, 45%. Uh, and to do something productive with peers, even if it's online, something to keep them busy. Uh, and so the, the, very small minority, 15%, are waiting until the pandemic subsides. So really, parents are looking to do something. They are interested in getting out there and doing something. Uh, what uh, further parent insights, or what parts of the scouting program do you want to continue as the pandemic progresses? Uh, and uh, across the board, it is doing something. So the various different somethings are everything from just online activities, uh, they want to continue with character and leadership building opportunities. And I'll hit on that real quick. This is an opportunity. If, you, if you're a leader and you're still kind of on the fence about whether or not you should meet or, uh, you know, what, what your unit should do, let me encourage you and think of it this way. Your children are watching, right? And this is an opportunity to show your children how to overcome adversity, right? And that this is a way that we can do things safely. Uh, and that we are going to take a leadership stance uh, and being able to move forward and be brave, uh, but also be smart and be safe. Um, online events to keep them engaged. Uh, I can tell you that most people are having uh, Zoom phobia, right? I mean, you know, this is a, uh, and for kids who are doing online learning, they're, they're on screen eight hours a day. Uh, so what we found is Cub Scouting, um, the online, only uh, it isn't very effective, uh, either a blended experience where they do some things online, but then they also do some things in person, uh, is working as well as in person as well. Aiden, get dressed. <laughs> okay. Aiden. You have your shoes on? Casey. All right. Uh, and then outdoor experiences is what they're looking forward to as well. And which is great because Outdoor uh, events and Cub Scouting are super easy to do, um, and we're we'll walk through that as well. So we ask leaders, why why are you not meeting right now? Of those who are not meeting, um, of course the the biggest hurdle that we have, fifty percent, we're saying that just they just have a place to meet. Uh, then uh, our families, the thirty four percent is highlighted that says families in our unit are not comfortable. I want to highlight that because this is a leader insight. So um, we're not, I'm not sure if that 30% is a real number or if that is just a leader's perception of how their families feel. 
Uh, sometimes we uh, project our own feelings and insecurities uh, onto the question and we really haven't surveyed and we really haven't asked our families uh, how comfortable they would be with an in-person event with social distancing and, and those types of things. So um, that goes back to, that's gonna get into one of our points of how to get started. So we're ready. We're gonna cover some, uh, some quick high, high level topics of how to get your pack started. And it all starts with, again, we can't emphasize this enough, check your local requirements to see if you can meet, right? And don't let those requirements be an obstacle because I'm gonna tell you that um, more than likely, the requirements for meeting in person um, are going to prevent you from being able to do a normal PAC meeting the way you used to do it pre-COVID, right? So just already you need to be in the mindset of we're going to have to adapt and change in some way. We're going to have to be flexible uh, in our plans. The second is to call the families in your PACs and DENs and reach out to them, not asking them if they want to meet. Right? That really shouldn't be your first call. Uh, your call should be just to check in on them. How are you doing? How are your kids adjusting to school? Um, and have that conversation, a very caring, friendly conversation. Through that conversation, chances are you'll be able to gauge whether or not that parent and that family would be willing to do something in person if the PAC planned something. Uh, and so getting to know and really knowing, engaging your parents. When you do this, realize that you are not going to get everyone uh, to be 100% on board, right? I, you all are experienced leaders. Uh, the experienced leaders know you never get 100% of the people. Uh, what you're looking for is a critical mass, right? And what is a critical mass? Well, that could be as little as three people, three families that are willing to, to do something together in person. Uh, and the reason for that is once you, guaranteed and say, hey, we're going to do this, not a contingent, not, not um, contingent on how many people uh, register or how many people are going to uh, come. We're doing this. We're going to be there. We're going to do that. Once you send that message out, there are some families out there who have gone just silent. They are not replying to your emails. They're not replying to your text messages. They just kind of shut us off for a while. Well, when you send them messages that says, hey, we are going to do, for example, a fishing derby at this local park on Saturday between two and four, they may show up. In fact, all the packs that we talked to that have had successful events said that a lot of these parents that they thought were just on the fence or gone actually came out and it was very surprising to them. So the, once you know what your regulations are, where, where your families are, as far as um, their willingness and their readiness level, it's time to meet, right? And again, you don't need to have every parent in a meeting to discuss this. Have your core leadership. Again, it could be just as three or four people that say, hey, we are going to do something um, and find solutions to what, knowing our circumstances, because everyone's circumstances is gonna be different. Your char partners are different. Your meeting locations are different. Your local communities and access to uh, parks or public spaces, it's all gonna be different. So you, it, it's gonna be that creative opportunity to sit down and say, okay, how can we make this work? The fourth point can be done in conjunction with the third one, uh, which is engage your TAR partner. Somewhere along the line, the TAR partner is going to have to, especially if you're going to have a regularly scheduled meeting somewhere other than your TAR partner or your regular meeting space, you need to inform your TAR partner uh, of that. And so engaging your charter partner earlier rather than later is better. Sometimes we've also heard that PACs were told that they cannot use, let's say, the, the church or their meeting room that they were using before uh, because that facility isn't reopened yet. Well, going back to them and asking them, can we use the parking lot or an outside space may be an option. Uh, my Scouts BSA troop that I'm a member of uh, the church is not open yet, but we did have a uh, court of honor uh, last week, and we had about 80 families uh, at this event, and it was outside in the parking lot. So that was our, uh, our ability to negotiate and talk to the tar partner about what would be acceptable and what's not. So engaging them is really important. And then 
reach out to your school or your neighborhood. Once you've got something planned and in the books and say, hey, we're going to do a rocket launch or we're going to do fishing or we're going to do kite flying. You notice all three of those things I mentioned are super fun. And there are things that you can easily do by social distancing in a wide open space outside. Once you have that set, uh, hey, consider reaching out to the school and your neighborhood or where kids are uh, and invite them to come. You can see this as a recruitment event if you want. Um, this is an example that, that we actually found here locally. Uh, two packs uh, came together and created these door hangers and they literally were just canvassing neighborhoods that they knew had a high concentration of, of uh, Cub Scout age kids and they were just hanging these on the, on, on the doors. Um, and if you do something like that, I, I will make sure to mention that hang them on the doors, don't put them on the mailboxes because that is not legal. Uh, make sure that uh, you put them somewhere that people see. Uh, and this was, a, we just thought this was a really neat way of just letting people say, hey, we're, gonna, we're, still, we're still here, we're going to have a great time, and we'd love for you to join the fun. All right, so those are our steps. Um, again, check, make sure you know your local requirements to see if you can meet. That means state and county. Uh, call the families you're in and pack, kind of gauge where they are, uh, then meet. And, and, and make this fun, as fun as you possibly can, right? Building relationships and friendships with adult leaders is just as important as making sure that it's fun for the kids too. Uh, other solutions that we found uh, other than meeting in the parking lot is that you can also meet at people's homes. So if you have a member of your pack who has access to maybe they have uh, a large backyard, maybe they have another uh, property that they own that would be uh, suited for that, that is perfectly fine. Uh, those locations that are new to you we always want to make sure that you are using, uh, there's a, a safety checklist for meeting locations that can be found on the scouting.org website as well. Uh, engaging your charter partners, making sure they're aware of what's going on, uh, and then reaching out to your neighborhood and your schools to invite others to, to, to come join the fun. So my last piece I'm gonna introduce you to is a scout book and the den leader experience. Uh, we have some new items that we've added to this uh, that wasn't intentionally designed for the pandemic, but we have found that it could be used in this time of the pandemic. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through this uh, new item that we have. Uh, a quick highlight of the scout book, of course, uh, if you don't already know, uh, essentially what we do is we take the hours and hours of time it would take you to plan den meetings and make it about a five minute process. Uh, and once that everything comes into uh, prearranged order, you don't like that order, it's super easy to mix things around and customize your calendar to the way that your den uh, is gonna run uh, for daytime locations to what topic you're gonna cover. Um, and then uh, that flexibility adds to, uh, is, is all part of the ability to have all the resources you need to deliver that den meeting at the palm of your hand. Everything from the meeting agenda to uh, what we used to call the, uh, the den meeting plans, this is it. Uh, we, we've had people, but if you are used to the den leader guides that had all the meeting plans of what you do before, during, after, this is all there. This is exactly what this is. We've uh, just uploaded and increased our video content uh, for video tutorials um, and uh, continue to improve on that. Now, here's the piece that is uh, interesting that we discovered that someone started using uh, in this time of, of uh, some virtual learning and virtual den meetings. Um, and this is the, the part of when you have your den set up in the den leader experience uh, and you have your parents connected with scouts and scout uh, in the scouting app and in scout book, uh, when, you talk, when you take attendance, when that happens, emails and notifications go to parents automatically. And for example, if you completed an adventure, an email goes to the parent congratulating them on their child's success, but also explaining to them why we do this adventure and why this adventure is important and what their child is learning in scouting uh, and the value. This is the value proposition. So this is, this is huge, an opportunity for us to directly communicate to parents that it wasn't just about building a birdhouse. There's a lot more to it than that. But here's the other cool part, is that if you missed a meeting, the parent gets notified and says, sorry, we missed you. Um, now, if they are connected with their child uh, in Scoutbook and they download the scouting app, 
Now the scouting app is for parents. So this is not, the scouting app is not an admin tool for leaders. It's strictly a tool for parents and it gives them the access to Scoutbook in a much more uh, friendly user environment. Uh, a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use. The great thing is this is a uh, downloadable app from the App Store or Google Play. We're adding, making it a lot easier to sign in. We've added a Google and Apple sign in. Uh, and once you get in there, the first thing that pops up is a calendar of the events that your child has. Well, if you have multiple scouts, that's the other thing, in multiple programs, all of those calendars are converged into one, so you, you don't miss anything scouting. But here's a parent view, the actual shots of uh, parent view in, scout, in the scouting app. As you can see, it looks very much like Scoutbook uh, and the Den Leader experience. Uh, they go into their child's pro profile, and if they go into the calendar, they'll see that they missed the August 5th meeting. There's a button there that says, catch up. You push that button and it's going to take you to the makeup work. In other words, what requirements did we do in that meeting? And it tells them exactly what to do and what page it is on their, in their child's handbook. So they can complete that at home. Once they've completed it at home, that parent pushes the catch up button, automatically in the scout book, those requirements are now signed off. So it's kind of like virtually the parent virtually sign off on their child's handbook. Boom, it's done. Uh, so the den leader can now track and see who's being able to complete the homework. Uh, and if you, so in a uh, virtual setting, what you could do is set up your den meetings and just mark everyone is absent. And if everyone's absent, everyone's gonna get this notice pushed out to them and all the parents are gonna be automatically fed missed out, they push the catch up button, they're going to see what they're, what either you're going to do for the den meeting or what you uh, have planned or want them to do uh, for the den meeting. Uh, so super, super cool feature. We just launched this a couple weeks ago uh, in connecting with Scoutbook and the scouting app. Uh, so that is, uh, that is it. I want to make sure I'm careful on my time, which I think I'm just at time. We're, we're just a little over, Anthony, but thank you so much for that. That is wonderful. We did have one question on simplifying uniforms, and that was whether or not uh, National was looking at going to a single slide for all of Cub Scouts or keeping them rank specific. Uh, we, are, we are looking at keeping them rank specific for now. We don't have anything on the agenda for making them singular. Um, so that's, that's, that's right. the answer to that question. <laughs> The second question, and I know someone posted a link on this, was the fees for 2021 for scouting. Yes. And what's the question? What are the fees for, for joining scouts in 2021? Oh, 2021, that has not been determined. Okay. And then we just had a question, does the catch-up feature work if you're doing the modules out of order? If you change the Yeah, order? so what you would want to do is you just want to make sure that the wherever – uh, adventure that you're working on, right, is is put in the past. And again, you can you can get more detailed if you're using the traditional scout book calendar, uh, because that just, that just populates your den leader experience. But within the den leader experience itself, you can move around uh, those pre-designated uh, topics. Um, so, yes, the answer is yes. You can do that. 